Namaskar. The much-anticipated U.S. Fed meeting turned out to be a non-event in the eyes of some economists who had expected a U.S. rate hike. Uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve maintained status quo, saying that global economic turmoil was the main reason. Here's a report. United States Federal Reserve kept interest rates unchanged at zero in a nod to concerns over a weak world economy, but left open the possibility of a modest policy tightening later this year. In what amounted to a tactical retreat, the U.S. Central Bank said an array of global risks and other factors had convinced it to delay what would have been the first rate increase since 2006. After the U.S. Central Bank's decision, U.S. Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen said outlook in China and other emerging economies have become more uncertain and the pace of rate rises will be gradual. The Federal Open Market Committee reaffirmed the current zero to quarter percent target range for the federal funds rate. Inflation, however, has continued to run below our longer run objective. Recent global economic and financial developments are likely to put further downward pressure on inflation in the near term. However, in light of the heightened uncertainties abroad and a slightly softer expected path for inflation, the committee judged it appropriate to wait for more evidence Indeed, it is a positive news for the emerging markets as it gives some room to focus on the domestic economic fundamentals to strengthen individually. India, however, geared up for any eventuality of a rate hike by the Federal Reserve, but the decision to maintain status quo will certainly give a boost to the Indian stock markets. The markets in the coming days are expected to trade green as the foreign portfolio investors who pulled out of the Indian markets are expected to become net buyers again. Business Desk, DD News. Well, stating that the uncertainty in the economic situation across the globe has made the Fed Reserve maintain status quo with respect to interest rates, the RBI governor, Raghuram Rajan, said that India is a bright spot and it appears an island of calm amid the ocean of turmoil. If we look around the world today, I think it would be fair to say it doesn't present a pretty picture. Industrial countries are still struggling, with a few exceptions to grow, and uncertainty about growth in the United States as well as the world is probably what, what uh, impelled the Fed to stay on hold yesterday. Our fellow BRICS have all got deep problems. Indeed, India appears to be an island of calm in an ocean of turmoil, that India can be far more successful and influential than it is today. Well, and uh, to discuss uh, the impact of the Federal Reserve's hold on the Indian economy, we have with us in the studio Dr. Arvind Virmani, is a former executive director at the IMF and uh, also former chief economic advisor to the government of India. And uh, Jayanta Roy Chaudhary is a senior journalist who is a well-known commentator on economic affairs. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being with us. We'll start with you, Dr. Virmani. Was this a surprise move, you would say? that you know the US Fed decided after looking at all the, the global economy turmoil etc to keep the rates unchanged so the first warning actually came when the IMF did its review of the global economy and suggested that the US uh, Fed should uh, uh, postpone the hike this happened a couple of months ago before the Chinese turmoil actually okay. from that time I have kind of been expecting and looking carefully at the probabilities expressed in the US financial markets and thinking it may not happen Yes. Then, of course, the second thing, as we all uh, know and we've been discussing, is what happened in China. Uh, and, and the basic thing there was that uh, a lot of analysts were completely taken by surprise. There were maybe 5% of analysts who have been following China uh, closely, which I would include myself, mm -hmm. who were not that surprised at the, uh, what was happening. So the timing is always difficult to predict. Okay. So these two things uh, have created, uh, uh, you know, uh, means that uh, even though uh, the uh, the U.S. economy may not be directly affected, it will be indirectly affected both as far as its growth prospects are concerned and the inflation, which the Fed looks at very carefully. Okay. So the second part, in a way, is the uh, the uncertainty uh, is right. really relates to the inflation expectations and and the likely sure. consequences on U.S. deflation okay. because that's a big mandate of the Fed. Uh, Mr. Roy Chaudhary, uh, the fact is that the objective of the Fed policy is to see that it has maximum employment and it wants 2% inflation, which is good for the economy. 
And uh, that's the reason why she says she's, you know, things are moving in that direction. But uh, this whole idea of uh, easy money uh, has been causing a lot of concern globally as well. Uh, that, you know, it's not this monetary policy is really flooding the world economy with some sort of cheap capital, which is putting the rest of the world in a bit of a, you know, concerned. Yeah, obviously that happened. I mean, when the U.S. Uh, monetary policy eased and we saw this flooding of money coming in, all emerging markets, stock markets rose, debt markets also mm. inflated. So these things happened, the bond market as well as the stock markets. They, they had a, you know, good time. Now, when they start bring, calling it back, yeah. calling the money back, obviously these markets are going to face turmoil. The fear that they will start calling the money back has already caused enough turmoil over the months, which is why many of the G20 countries actually wanted it to happen. Mm -hmm. Their point was, let it happen, let US do whatever it wants to do. Yes. Let there be a bloodbath, if there is a bloodbath, mm -hmm. let there be. Most of the market had actually discounted that, you know, the possibility of the US Fed raising rates by a quarter percent or so. So, which is why when they did not do that, there was a relief rally in most, many of the stock markets, including ours. Yes. We had a good, uh, good relief rally, and hopefully that will continue for a few days at least. Well, the rest of the world doesn't seem to be rallying at all. In fact, Europe is in deep in the red. Yes, uh, and, it is. Uh, well, I mean, the, uh, the Asian markets were also mixed, and the expectations are that Wall Street is going to go down. Tomorrow. I think the, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, belief in India was that there would be a quarter percent hike in the U.S. Uh, Fed rate, okay. which is why the players in the Indian market at least had really sure. uh, un, uh, really sold out a lot. So there, there is a relief rally here. Maybe sure. the expectations were not that high elsewhere. Uh, Dr. Birmani, let's understand what this actually does for cheap uh, capital. I mean, we have uh, external commercial borrowings that we can bring in, quite a lot of it. And the cost of our capital is kind of expensive, isn't it, compared to that? And uh, I mean, this is always going to be that the U.S. money will be much easy, more easily, much cheaper uh, for investments. Is that, you know, I mean, are our rates going to ever be competitive, you know, to try and kickstart or whatever our economy? Not kickstart, but yeah. to make, so to make f uh, capital more uh, equitable. So, so there are uh, two. One is the short-term thing and one your future question about yes. uh, long-term rates. So, uh, as far as current is concerned, why were uh, people in India concerned? Because normally what happens is when interest rates rise uh, in the rest of the world, there is a tendency, I'm not saying that necessarily it's special to India, it's mm -hmm. not. Uh, there's a tendency for capital to flow uh, to countries uh, which are raising rates and, uh, and to out of those which are lowering them. Uh, but the markets had largely uh, uh, kind of anticipated this and it in a way happens beforehand. Mm. Uh, but part of it is left to the actual time. So when it doesn't happen, in a sense, you see a reverse flow. So okay. for the next month, so uh, it, it actually has an opposite effect sure. when what is anticipated doesn't happen. Now looking at the long term uh, interest rates, it's really as economists, we look at real interest rate, which is the nominal rate, what people generally see, right. minus the inflation. So the long-term rates depend a lot on long-term inflation. Okay. And generally in India, we have had an inflation rate which is several uh, points higher than, let's say, the average of the world. Okay. And so uh, the key to uh, long-term reduction in interest rates is, of course, the long-term inflation rate, okay. which Fair is enough. what the RBI governor keeps sure. talking about. Now, of course, uh, you know, it's not so simple. Uh, yes. They are both supply side factors, they are demand side factors, there's monetary fiscal policy. Okay. Uh, but hopefully, uh, we are moving in that direction. So, uh, Mr. Roy Chaudhary, will Indian money be uh, competitive, you know, or is it always going to be more costly, given this e the, the equation that uh, Dr. Veermani is talking about? I mean, our interest rates have, I mean, our inflation rates have fallen. So, uh, there is a case now for for a rate uh, cut. So as Mark, well. what you're yeah. really asking is, uh, is the RBI governor uh, going yeah, to Yeah, on the 29th, away? they will cut rates, it feels like. So it I mean? looks, I mean, there is, a, people at least are hoping that mm -hmm. they will cut rate. The question is by how much? I mean, will it be another of his quarter percent cuts? Uh, the three quarter percent cuts that Already the RBI, this year. Uh, yeah. go governor did go ahead with, it hasn't really yielded much result. Of course, the banks haven't passed it on. Uh, they haven't for various reasons, including the facts that they have huge amount of NPAs yes. and their own operating costs have gone up given the number of schemes there, extra schemes that they are handling. Sure. Uh, so they have passed on about 0.4% of the 0.75% mm -hmm. 
interest rate cut, policy rate cut that the RBI signaled. So, possibly the RBI may be if it, if it wants to really cut rates and help uh, you know either bankers as well as corporates who are yes. looking towards a cheaper interest rate regime, they would possibly be looking at something of half percent at least. Okay. That is what industry wants and that is what many of the bankers are hoping. What the RBI governor will ultimately do is of course his business. Uh, we cannot really forecast here what Mr. Raghuram Rajan uh, will mm -hmm. do. He keeps his cards, he seems to keep his cards quite right. close to his chest. But we heard him there uh, today saying that, you know, India is a bright spot and uh, they And then he need also talked about inflation, uh, you know, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, sure. the, the, the fears that India has about inflation. So all these things have to sure. be looked into. Um, plus, of course, uh, one good thing is that uh, the, uh, the, the, the fall in the value of the rupee, for the time being at least, okay. will be checked. So, which is a good thing uh, as far as our imports bill is concerned. So, uh, Dr. Veermani, the, uh, the rupee will stabilize as a result of what's happened here? I mean, is so, that, uh, really, uh, I mean, uh, and uh, how will that happen? I can't really talk about the interest rate because I'm on the committee yeah. okay. uh, and it's a quiet period. But uh, broadly, uh, you know, as I was pointing out, when people were anticipating a rise, generally there is a tendency for capital to flow out and the exchange rate to depreciate. Yes. So that has got reversed at least okay. temporarily. So presumably uh, depending on when the next anticipation is, some people were talking about October, now that seems to be going out from what I am hearing in the international okay. uh, arena. And so again, uh, you know, if it becomes postponed to December, then at least for the next few months uh, we, we should not have that kind of an issue. So uh, just Help us understand, uh, Dr. Veermani, this U.S. Uh, Fed policy and monetary policy, because uh, they haven't changed rates for nine years. I mean, yeah. what's actually going on here? And you know, uh, we've so, seen right. this. It looks like uh, the last time they did make a change, it was in the time yeah. of Alan Greenspan, and we've had uh, Bernanke sitting there. Now right. we have Janet Yellen sitting there. What's happening? Right. So, so th this is slightly. Let me see if I can simplify it. Uh, you know, uh, in 2009-10, when the uh, global crisis, after the crisis, I, I was in the IMF, so I know the internal, you know, the discussions and how we uh, took sure. part in that. So, so the issue was really, uh, you know, the, the uh, fiscal policy in a sense was paralyzed and most of Europe and America were trying to squeeze the fiscal policy for political reasons or whatever reasons that was happening, okay. which meant all the burden in a sense of the uh, recession okay. fell on monetary policy sure. and that has been a bad experience. I mean, I actually uh, remember arguing in the IMF that this, this was going to be delay the recovery tremendously. Okay. In fact, I gave uh, specific numbers. I said it will take at least five to seven years uh, for the U.S. recovery because of this wrong policy choices okay. and now we are in the sixth year, so okay. we are right in the middle of it. Similarly, right. I had suggested that in Europe for again similar sort of reasons and other sure. uh, complications, it would take 10 years. So uh, the, the problem has been that because everybody thought uh, this was a normal recession, okay. they have been making optimistic projections and then being repeatedly disappointed and that creates uncertainty. Okay. You know, if in the beginning they had said, okay, with these policies it's going to take so long uh, of the order I said, then you would have had less uncertainty. All right. So this uncertainty then affects everybody, all of us. We okay. also have Fair to enough. face that uh, consequences. Uh, Mr. Roy Chaudhary, uh, Bernanke was supposed to have some sort of burn doctrine or something or uh, it was which actually f seemed to have said that monetary policy is not going to be important in the future mm -hmm. because uh, uh, trade cycles don't exist anymore in the economy. I mean, this was his policy and uh, people have studied it and he was in charge of the of the U.S. Federal Reserve. Well, I mean, this is, <laughs> and he says that trade cycles don't exist anymore. Well, the very fact that the United States is thinking of raising its <laughs> rate of uh, interest is 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 realization that obviously it does impact. It does impact. No, but I mean, the when the global, that, yeah, that sure. the, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Dr. Varmani will have much uh, yeah. to add on this. The very fact that they have not raised rates at this point of time. Is a, is a statement that it's an important tool. The A, of course, they are waiting and watching what is going to happen. B, 
you have to realize that if they had raised the rates at this point of time, much money would have flowed back into the U.S. as Dr. Wilmani right, right, said, right. and the dollar would have become even stronger. Sure. If it becomes even stronger, the U.S., which is uncompetitive in most markets, mm. would have become even more uncompetitive. Okay. Can you imagine what the U.S. what problems the U.S. would have had in selling their fighter jets or whatever it is that they are trying to sell? Okay, fair enough. Uh, you you know, want to come in I, on yeah, that? I remember doctrine, what you're yeah. referring to. There yeah. used to be something called the Greenspan put. Okay. Which was this assumption that whenever economy uh, started going down, the money would be pumped in and it wouldn't. So the cycle would, the in a sense, the bottom of the cycle would be wiped out. Yes. And you wouldn't have a proper cycle. I think that's what you're referring to. Right. So this the, the, is yeah. this is there is there evidence to show this or no? What? No. That, they, what has happened is completely the because opposite. Because the U.S. seems to be <laughs> believing that. I mean, to yeah. some extent. Well, I'm not sure. Well, yeah. There I mean, is look at their monetary policy. Yeah. It hasn't changed for, they're in the long haul. I mean, they're going on in this for for a long period of time. Well, it also depends on your ideology and how you look at the world. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, you know, we used to discuss in the IMF whether the money, uh, actually you have a point, because the money being pumped in was not really reviving the U.S. economy. It was going into commodities. That, okay. That's actually the problem which a lot of people have raised. So the commodity prices were kept up. It didn't really, you referred or hinted, I think you hinted, that uh, there have been complaints that the monetary policy has not really helped the U.S. economy. Yes. But there was no other option in my view, okay. uh, you know, though it may okay. have been taken to a, a, a extreme or uh, more uh, was done than was perhaps uh, sure. advisable purely because then it pumped up commodities. But the U.S. economy, uh, Mr. Roy Chaudhary, is doing reasonably well. I mean, it's 2.2 percent it's growing at, uh, which is for the size of their economy is massive. And uh, I mean, would be creating a d decent amount number of jobs. The job, every data, year. job data has shown some yes. rise, but it is not very significant. There is still okay. unemployment there. So. Uh, that is one problem. I mean, as Dr. Birmani said, you know, much of the money which they created, which they spent, that went off into financial channels. It did not go into the real economy. It did not create infrastructure. It did not create jobs as such. That was one big problem. The jobs that, that are being created, much of it is being created in the services sector. Yes. Very, of course, most advanced economies have a huge services sector. The manufacturing sector is much, much smaller. Right. But the way the U.S. has destroyed its in a, you know, in, 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 in smaller towns, the cities which used to depend on manufacturing, Detroit, etc. Right, it'll take, that's true. take them a lot of time to revive it. You have to okay. change the complexion, change the way it works. Sure. It's going to be problematic. The U UK took several decades to get over the fact that they had to do without mining, without the kind sure. of manufacturing that they had in their middle counties. And become more of a global financial center. U.S. Okay. is a huge country. To do that in USA is not so easy. So yes. you will have to do some kind of revival, real economic revival also, if you really want right. to pump. But so, Dr. Veermani, yeah. actually the, the economy that seems to take, and I mean the stock market that's taken the biggest beating is in Germany today. Uh, yeah. Why is that? I mean that's so supposed to be the economy of the world that's doing reasonably well. Uh, so, uh, the problem in Germany is because they benefited, they were probably the maximum exporter of capital goods to China. Okay. So, given the anticipation of a China slowdown, their capital goods sector is going to suffer. So, and they are also very export dependent. Uh, so, okay. so, they benefited from, in a sense, China's growth yes. and will suffer uh, when it goes down. That's one companies. major reason. Yes. Uh, so let's uh, stick again a little bit to this policy because uh, and the kind of impact it will have on emerging countries because their their stock markets seem to be doing well. Uh, is this, you know, the, the, the old feeling that uh, a lot of this money is going into speculative mark uh, for, for speculative reasons into markets? Oh, oh, yeah. And well, I mean, the emerging markets are growing faster. Well, I think the effect of the, the bubble has kind of burst now, uh, you know, uh, because both from the U.S. side uh, and the Chinese side, uh, which was all that uh, stuff, you know, the market had gone up and collapsed. Sure. So my uh, estimate is that two-thirds of the effects of that whole China, direct, indirect, whatever, is already inside the system. Okay. It's just that people didn't recognize it, but now they are sure that's happened, mm -hmm. uh, more sure. So uh, there is perhaps a little more pain, uh, but uh, as somebody pointed out recently, you know, eventually uh, the whole point of a cycle is at some point you'll bottom out. So it is not that 
uh, it, it's really people are trying to see what to do in the interim, okay. whether they'll bottom out in six months or nine months for the world. I'm saying, no, I'm yes, not talking yes. about India. Sure, sure. Uh, India, yeah. as everybody okay. says, we are doing relatively better. So, so the question is this interim period where there's a lot of uncertainty. People are still not hundred percent sure mm -hmm. how much further growth slowdown, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which causes uh, difficulties. Right, uh, Mr. Roy Chaudhary, are there any mitigating factors you know that make uh, emerging economies sort of relatively safer at a time when you know the biggest economies of the world are exercising their monetary policy uh, that you know we they either well in 2013 we were very worried about what would happen in the US uh, but today we are not so badly off no, that one point is that we have a better foreign exchange reserves. Yeah, we have about 350 yeah, billion 351 mm. or something whatever it is yeah. exactly it slipped a little from 364 or whatever but it's still quite good. It's a good foreign exchange reserves. And hopefully by December when the U.S. decides on a quarter percent or whatever they're going to decide on, we will have built up a little more reserves. So also our current account deficit and fiscal Has deficit are not so, so all these bad. Are, these yeah. are positives. Now, so that, that, is, that makes us better prepared for uh, the eventuality that will happen. I mean, it's mm -hmm. going to happen someday. So we are readier. That's true. The other point is that because of China's, I wouldn't say collapse, but, you know, the depression it has gone through, commodity prices have gone down. So that's okay. a sweet spot for us. Sure. And of course, the world is banking on India to grow so that commodity prices ultimately rise. Mm -hmm. But India's growth rate isn't going to pick up to that extent as so soon, so quickly. So commodity prices are going to re remain relatively low. Okay. So our current account deficit is going to remain at a lower level. These right. are positives for us. These are, this, these are the positives that we have from the China's sure. you know, problem as well as the U.S. deciding not to go ahead with a Fed Right. rate hike right now. Uh, Dr. Veermani, I mean, big business in India is doing well. I mean, we have lots of uh, millionaires and all that amongst the highest now in Asia. But uh, what about the SMEs and, uh, you know, I Well, mean, I am not sure I agree with you because, you know, unlike in the 2007s when we had a boom which was led by the corporate sector, Okay. Uh, where they were drivers of investment and growth. That's no longer true uh, right now. All right. Because we have a growth rate of, let's say, 7.5%. 7, 7 yes. But the corporate sector is not growing at that rate, real. Okay. So, so this is an SME-driven growth or what do you say? It is, has to be. I mean, by elimination, right. I mean, we have less direct data on SMEs. Okay. Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, corporate data, we have IIP, which measures co uh, basically organized sure. uh, sector. Uh, so, in some sense, that this is a wrong impression okay. because if, if the economy is so, some people have questioned, I don't agree with them, okay. but if the economy is really growing at 7.3, 7.5 we are talking about, yes. then actually it is the SMEs uh, and tiny and whatever. I mean, we don't know exactly, okay. but so it, it's not the corporates. So then, uh, Mr. Roy Chaudhary, to give that a boost, uh, you know, there would be uh, already uh, the cost of capital is reasonable f from outside the country. Uh, you know, to try and make them to get attractive loans or you know or capital to SMEs. What 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 does the government of India need to do? I don't think that kind of loan is going to flow into the SME sector because of the nature of the SME sector. A, secondly, the cost of capital uh, borrowed from abroad is actually not that low. Is it? Uh, uh, because if you take into account the foreign exchange risks and other issues which are involved in it, it's actually quite costly. And for a smaller entrepreneur, it's costlier. That's because right. he's not really, he doesn't have the wherewithal to handle the foreign exchange risks, to play in the market, to see to it that, you know, okay. that he's able to mitigate his risks. So that is difficult for him. For him, it is better to borrow domestically. It is better for him to raise money mm -hmm. from the domestic capital markets. Even for the large corporates, if you see, sure. most of what is happening, most of the investments are being funded by Indian banks. It is not borrowing okay. from abroad. Even right. when Mr. Adani goes to buy a mine in Australia, the he looks at State Bank of India first to find funding, okay. not right. at you know the Aust some Australian bank, Commonwealth Bank, or whatever it is. So Indian capital still, because of the various factors, I, is still attractive. It is not unattractive. Fair but yes, a rate cut will help the corporates a lot. Uh, so actually, you know, it's a period from roughly 2010 to 2012 or 13 where large part of the ECB borrowing came in. Okay. That is what uh, is the risk now in the sense that if the exchange rate, because generally we found yes. uh, historically that yes. corporates don't hedge this. You know, they think okay. it's cheap money. But it's not That's cheap, right. as was just pointed out, because you have exchange rate risk. Yes. And unless you hedge that risk, uh, okay. you know, you, you could be in trouble. Sure. So that is really the right. risk factor which we people are worrying about. We've run about. short of time. It's the old, yeah. old debt.
We've run short of time, Dr. Birmani, but one final word from you. Is this U.S. policy, you know, going to affect its debt? Because uh, already, apparently, I mean, it's uh, uh, when we look at the election debates that are going on in the Republicans, they are very concerned about the debt. Uh, and, uh, you know, if they continue to be in a policy like this, wouldn't their f deficit to be a serious problem? Well, uh, you know, they, they have this thing called the sequester. And I think, again, in the next few months, the same issue is going to come. Unfortunately, because of the politics has frozen the discussion, uh, they are not uh, uh, able to uh, get a rational path. So much of it happens arbitrarily. You know, uh, the sequester means it's cut by X percent. I forget the exact okay. number. 10 percent every year sure. or something. And that's not a good way to contain the fiscal deficit. So that is, problem is again arising now and will be okay. a problem. A final word from you, Mr. Roy Chaudhary. Did the U.S. miss an opportunity to raise rates here? No, I th don't think so. I think the U.S. has done the right thing. They have protected okay. their economy. So they are right. Yes, it would have been, if it had happened now, it would have been the end of the story for some time at least. But anyway, uh, it's, good. it's good news for India. Okay, we leave it there. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being with us on this special program. Well, global markets have had a mixed reaction. While the Asian markets were positive to some extent, the European markets were deeply in the red based on Yellen's uh, assessment of the global economy. But experts in India feel that India is in a position to ease rates to some extent. Now, all eyes will be on the RBI chief, uh, Raghuram Rajan, to see whether he can use this headroom to cut rates by at least 25 basis points later this month. The RBI has lowered repo rate by a combined 75 basis points so far this year in three installments, and its next monetary policy meeting is on September 29. Thanks very much for your time. Namaskar.